Thanks, Thomas, and thanks for the gentleman who spoke before me. It has taken 10 minutes of mine, too. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hope my slide works. Yeah. Working. Yes. So, uh, you're all most welcome to the world of frogs and. Uh, I will not be typically talking like a taxonomist. I probably see it as a uh, guide for those who are interested in frog world. Uh, briefly introduce uh, you about amphibians. They are the animals which have two life stages, one as tadpole, the other one as uh, adult one. And tadpoles generally seen in water bodies. Adults are outside the water body and some of them get into it. And it's one of the most fascinating world of uh, frogs. <coughs> Anybody can identify, it's easy to identify. There are a lot of keys available, there are a lot of papers available online. You can just go through and you can do uh, the identification. I thought he is helping me. Anyway, uh, I need to help myself. Yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah, they will. Yeah, so this is how they look like. Uh, many of them are from Western parts. <laughs> And in Bangalore, we have about 16 species. Uh, each one has a unique call pattern with which we identify them. Uh, this is the diversity in India. We have about 394 and the number is growing. Almost 10 new species being added every year from last 15 years. You can see the diversity over there. And all the citizens are most welcome to join and to be in group. You may be the one who is going to describe a new species soon. So there's a lot of opportunity for you. So typical identification will be like this. You have the characters which are quite similar to human beings. There's no need for you to think of anything else. Only thing is, a couple of terminologies being derived from elsewhere. That's why you see uh, tibia or fibula kind of stuff. Otherwise, it's all the same. Same thing what we have in our body that's there in the frogs, except this neck. To complicate further, this is what we generally measure as taxonomists, but I will not take you there. I will make your life easier and also mine. So, in general, when we do citizen science kind of stuff, we will instead of going morphological way, we will see the frogs where they are. It's habitat based identification. So I will do it uh, first with the terrestrial ones, where predominantly frogs can be seen on the land. And the first one will be the common toe. And you can see that frog uh, almost everywhere. Any part you take, you will see the frog. I don't know what is not on here. It should actually make a sound. And that's the identification key of frogs. So it is not that, uh, yeah, I hope this works now. So that's the key identification character. So if you want to uh, know about this particular frog, it is the call pattern. And then look at those characters which is marked here with the arrows. Uh, this one. This is the cranial ridge, that's the bony structure, and there is a poison gland called parotid gland, uh, which is almost existing in all toads. Okay, and then you can do, see those spines, and there's a webbing over there. So when we uh, look at a frog, we we'll look for those characters, uh, but you need not really worry about describing all the characters. But be a natural observation, as Ganeshan said earlier. So more you observe, you start appreciating what what it is. And we are taxonomists on your own. Don't depend on anybody. There is no authority kind of stuff. So we are all struggling to stabilize taxonomy. So you will be contributing for that. Next is the Ferguson's toad. Again, one of the commonest toad in Bangalore and arid areas. So the call pattern is something like this. Yeah, uh, if you look at the cranial lid, there is no cranial lid, but there are cranial uh, dots and every, the entire body is spinular and you have parotid gland which is flattened in the species. It is small sized, uh, one of the uh, common toad which can walk like this and this is that. Next is the common burrowing frog, this is called Spirothica breviceps which has a calling pattern like this.
and most important character is not visible there. I don't know what is happening with the slides. So there is a digging apparatus in that. That's why they are called burrowing frogs. They make a cavity on the ground and get inside. All other characters we can discuss when we see it. So this is a supratympanic fold. It's a fold around the ear, eardrum. And if you look at the snout, it is blunt. And the body doesn't have any tubercles like toe. Then getting into semi-aquatic frogs, which is like on the edges of water bodies or in the agriculture fields or in paddy fields. This is what you see. Uh, one of the commonest frog is the Microila ornita or the ornate narrowmouth frog, which calls like this. That's the call. And uh, in comparison to toad, there is no poison gland in the frogs and a smooth body. You have ornamentation on the back, that's why the name, ornate narrowmouth frog. And you have small mouth. The mouth is very small. This is the vocal sac, which is blackish or purplish in color. And if you look at the toe tip, it is blunt, there is no finger, dilated fingertips. Next is the, yeah. Yeah, that's common cricket frog. Again, one of the commonest frog in Bangalore you can see or you can hear about. Uh, look at the snout, which is V-shaped, pointed. And there are glandular folds on the skin. That's the unique character. And there is small webbing in the feet. And there is something called fear worrying lines on the stomach. When you invert the frog and see, there are two lines on the stomach. That's, that's why they belong to Periodial genus. Next is uh, India's largest frog, which is already bull frog. And uh, it, it's something like 20 25 centimeters large. Okay? And you have glandular fold. Uh, this is the larger version of the cricket frog, it, it resembles like that. And when it croaks, it has a cobalt blue vocal sac. That's, that's the identification feature. The next one is the bicolored frog. Again, most common, especially uh, when there is a water inundation or uh, lake kind of structure is there. So you will see millions of tadpoles, black sized tadpoles, which belong to this uh, species. It has a large tympanum, uh, different colored dorsum. There is a Thai, which is also chocolate in color, and uh, it makes a very feeble note. Please listen to this call. You you might miss this call. That's all. That's the call. Okay. So next species are all aquatic. Uh, we have common skittering frog. You might have heard them throughout the year, especially uh, anywhere, any water body, you can uh, see these frogs. Okay? And they have full webbing in the feet. You can see that there. The full web, they swim, they stay inside the water and they swim. And the eyes are on the top of their head, unlike other species. That's a character feature of any aquatic species because they have to see from the top of the uh, water surface, so they keep their eyes on the head, unlike other species which are on the sides. And then we have arboreal species. One of the commonest is the Pseudophilatus amboli or amboli bush frog. Uh, you have a tympanum which is colored as a character, and there's a lemonish uh, uh, yellow throat when it croaks, and smooth uh, surface of the dorsum. And it croaks something like this. That's the call. That's, that's the call. The last species uh, for today is the common tree frog, Polypidatus maculatus. Again, it's pretty larger than the Amboli frog. That's the differentiating character. They are seen even in the bathrooms in Bangalore. So very, pretty common. And if you leave it outside, there's a, a couple of stories I've heard. They come back in the night hours. Again, that's a wonderful question to see what, why they do that. And you have uh, full webbing. They have full webbing on the feet. There will be a uh, dilated disc. And that's uh, and when they call, they call like this. That's all. Pretty, pretty, pretty kind of song. So why we do this citizen science is this the precise reason. Uh, uh, even though we have 394 odd species, 50% of the species we don't know the uh, threat status. We are still, or uh, we are yet to see that. And if people act to it, 
if they observe and uh, see from where the threat has been described, we will be able to address the threat status. So that's where we need more people to join in for amphibian uh, conservation as well as identification of frogs. And if you don't have amphibians, you will definitely see that happening. Uh, you will say amphibians are missing from your place. So that's all about it. These are my collaborators. I thank them. And way ahead is that you should join us and we should go together.